Welcome to Robinson Foundry. My name's Seth Robinson, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily cast 3D prints using sand, sodium silicate, and drywall joint compound. This method is called Lost PLA Shell Casting. I've experimented with this quite a bit, and as you can see, I've ended up with some pretty decent results, considering that you can do this with items that can be purchased at most hardware stores. One of the biggest challenges with this process is printing a model with only one wall and as little infill as possible. This is a cross-section of what a normal 3D print should look like. And this is what a model should look like for lost PLA casting. This model is called The Conduit by artist Zane Rogers. Along with the model, I also printed some tubes to use as a sprue and vent. If you would like to print this model yourself, you can find a link in the description. After everything was done printing, I went to work gluing the pieces together. It's best to fill the shell with metal from the bottom to the top. This way, as the plastic is melted, it floats to the top and out the vent. It's extremely important to adequately vent objects that are cast this way. I used joint compound to thinly coat the model. This stuff does an amazing job at capturing the detail of the model. I should have coated the sprue and vent as well, but it had been a while since I used this method and I just forgot. When I was certain that the joint compound was totally dry, I started mixing the sand. This concrete sealer is 100% sodium silicate, and it's great for mold making because it hardens in the presence of CO2. I mixed play sand and sodium silicate together until the sand felt slightly moist, and then I gently packed it down around the model. I made sure to pack the sand down enough to get rid of the air, but not enough to crush the model. I used a blowtorch to open up the sprue and vent and waited a few hours for the sodium silicate to harden up. I placed a piece of angle iron over the vent to prevent plastic from spitting up towards me as the mold is being filled with metal. For this casting, I used aluminum that came from car rims. Unlike aluminum cans or aluminum extrusions, this aluminum is great to cast with because it's an alloy that's specifically designed for casting. I melted the aluminum in my furnace and let it heat up to around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit or 800 degrees Celsius and then poured it into the mold.
About an hour later, I pulled the casting out of the sand to see what it looked like. I'm blown away by how well this method works. You can see that the joint compound captured all the detail of the model. This rough looking finish is from aluminum seeping through the little holes in the coating and it breaks off easily. After cutting off the sprue, I used a screwdriver to chisel away the excess metal that seeped through the shell. Then I cut off the vent and used an angle grinder to clean up the casting. The last step was to shine it up with a wire wheel and the casting was finished. I think this turned out great considering that I made it using materials that can be purchased for about $40. If I did it over again, I would coat the entire shell with joint compound and use a larger riser on the head to supply the casting with metal as it solidifies and shrinks. Overall, I'm happy with how this turned out, and I'll continue making videos showing this method. And as always, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Tell me what you think in the comments, and subscribe for future projects. Thanks for watching.